Grzykowski here. Schaefer here. Chandler here. Uh, would you please all look over the October 9th minutes? If you are satisfied there's no omission, correction, errors. Schaefer moves to approve the minutes of October 9th, 2018. Chandler seconds. Roll call. Anna, aye. Johnson and Staines. Grillo, aye. Mark abstains. David Chai. Who's the call? Ski I. Super die. Chandler I. Okay. Um, significant common council actions. Harry. Council approved the following: a resolution approving a certified survey map for John Thompson Highgate LLC for the property at 7869 South 13th Street, and an ordinance of adopting an amendment to the comprehensive plan for the properties at 7266 and 7328 South Howell Avenue. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Um, under new business, item 5A is a signed plan review uh, for the property at 500 West Drexel. Uh, no Pete. No oh, Pete. Wow. So this is a master signed plan proposal for the multi-tenant building on the property on the corner of 6th and Drexel. This is for I Kenosha. You'll recall that there was a grocery store that was also proposed on the combined property. So this is a site plan showing you that combined property um, master plan. That we're talking about the building that is on this side of 6th Street. This may look familiar to, me, to most of you. This was actually proposed as part of the multi-tenant building um, plan review. So this includes uh, three tenant signs for three tenant spaces. It does comply with all code requirements. For your um, reference, this does have, this is required as part of code that all buildings with two or more tenants, actually three plus tenants, have to have a master sign plan. End cap tenants per this master sign plan will be allowed to have one sign on the south elevation. Um, and then one sign on the east or west elevation. No signs will be allowed on the north. Window signs are also included in this sign package. Uh, they do comply with code. However, the, the written portion of the master sign plan that was presented by the applicant is a little bit more restrictive than code, so window signs are going to be restricted to one illuminated open-close sign, no others. Anything else would have to go through regular uh, code requirements and permitting. Monument signs for the development also comply with code. Those were on the uh, site plan. This is what they would look like, one per street frontage. Aldi will be at the top and then the three tenant spaces will be below the Aldi sign. If the plan commission is satisfied with the master sign plan as presented, there is a suggested motion that the plan commission approves the master sign plan for 500 West Drexel Avenue as proposed. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Um, is the applicant here? Would they like to say anything or? Um, if not, we'll open it up to the commission for questions. Okay. One from Christina, one from Brian. Don? Greg? What's you, Chris? Yes, sir. Pat? Fred? Good. Jossie? Wow. Okay. Um, I don't have anything on it either. Uh, rarely for a sign do we come through this quick. So, um, seeing, seeing no discussion, no questions, uh, motion please. Oracle move that the plan commission approve the master sign plan for 500 West Drexel Avenue as proposed. Who's just second? Um, who got it? Chris? Fred did. Fred got it. Fred beat you to the punch. Fred Seepert, please, on the second. Uh, roll call. Anna, I. Johnston, I. Hello, I. Laura, I. Kavich, I. Guzikowski, I. Super, I. Chandler, I. Five. Excuse B. me, Commissioner oh. Carell, your microphone is not on. Press the button with the voice symbol. There you go. Fred, it looks Carole, like yours is I. down, there too. You Fred, is yours working? You got it. No, you're on. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Hey, good. On. yeah. Okay. You're good. It'll, uh, it'll go when you. Item 5B, uh, review site building landscape and related plans uh, for a community-based hospital building on a property, on the property, 7869 South 13th. Carrie? 
Give me one second. I'm having technology sure. issues. There we go. Sorry about that. So this is a request for a community hospital or a neighborhood hospital on the corner of 13th and Drexel. This is on the northwest corner. Land commissioners will recall that there were several CSMs that affected this particular property. Uh, the last CSM did carve off this particular parcel, or actually the second to last CSM carved off this parcel. Um, those three CSMs that were reviewed prior to this do need to be recorded prior to submission of any building permit applications for this particular uh, site plan. The proposal includes an 18,223 square foot hospital facility. It would provide 24 seven acute care services that includes lab, radiology, pharmacy, and related. It has a seven bed ER and eight inpa inpatient beds. Patients requiring any higher level surgery or other care would be transferred to another facility in the area. Uh, that would be coordinated with the fire department and any other emergency services. They are anticipating about 15 to 25 patients a day and about one to two ambulance transports per week. One doctor will be on site at all times. They are estimating at this time to have 10 employees at a peak shift uh, with a total of 40 to 50 clinical and non-clinical employees at the facility. Specifically for this particular parcel, you can see that it takes up most of the two and a half acres. Access is restricted to a proposed shared easement, which is to the north of the property off of 13th Street. Since that is on a county highway, there will need to be approval from Milwaukee County for that access, and that access approval must have a copy to the city prior to or concurrent with submission of building permit applications. You can see parking is provided on either side of the building itself. Minimum parking requirements include two stalls for every three patient beds, one space for every staff doctor, and one st uh, stall for every peak shift employee. And while the total number of doctors is still forthcoming, we do know that at least one will be on shift again 24-7. Um, and the plans call for a total of 35 parking stalls. The minimum required, excluding the total number of doctors that could be on site at any time, is 21. So that may fluctuate a little bit, but it does appear that the minimum parking requirements in the proposed plan are met. Shifting to the landscape plan, you'll see that there is landscaping surrounding the building as well as on the exterior perimeter of the lot itself. There is one trash enclosure that is located on the northeast corner we are in discussions with the applicant's consultant about the exact location of that. It might need to be turned or located a little bit closer uh, to the building and a little bit further west. Um, it does have the same face brick as proposed on the building, and it will match. Uh, trash enclosures must be located outside of front and street yards, which is why we are taking a closer look at that particular location for the trash enclosure. Modifications to the overall landscaping may also be required based on potential minor site modifications that has anything to do with what may be required here tonight or the final location of the trash enclosure. Otherwise, the landscaping does appear to be closely in compliance with code. Turning now to the building itself, elevations are on the screen before you. There are a few primary building materials that are being chosen and proposed two types of face brick that must meet the minimum four inch requirement per code. And that is included in the list of suggested conditions of approval for plan commission consideration. EFIS is also proposed, although it is not allowed as more than a 25% decorative accent per code. So we still are waiting for those um, materials percentages per elevation to be submitted. Uh, once we confirm that, there may be some slight modifications to these elevations as well. Architectural me metal panels are also proposed. Those are not allowed as a primary building material per code, but will need a three-quarter majority approval of the Plan Commission if the Plan Commission finds that those um, materials are acceptable. 
Spandrel glass and translucent windows and a curtain wall are also proposed. It's a little bit difficult to determine where exactly the spandrel windows are going to be, which panels are going to be spandrel on this elevation. They will be on the east. You'll see the curtain wall is on the southeast corner. So some of that will be spandrel, some of that will be clear, and some of that will be a curtain wall. Decorative metal screens are proposed to screen the rooftop mechanical units, and those are proposed to be comprised of flat rib metal panels. Uh, in a gray color to match the, the proposed colors of the primary building materials. Aluminum canopies are also proposed over the entrances, and there is a generator enclosure that's on the northwest corner of the building. Those materials will match the building face brick with CMU and ribbed metal gates. It's the same as the trash enclosure as well. Staff has also requested a clarification on a proposed ceramic wall. Uh, that was included in the building materials that were submitted. However, um, as far as I can tell, they don't appear to be on the elevations anywhere. So we're asking for clarification on exactly where that ceramic wall is proposed. If it is still proposed, it might have been a holdover from a previous design. There was a, a comment that we received from engineering regarding the stormwater pond on the adjacent lot that needs to include an easement. And from the water and sewer utility, sewer ease, water and sanitary sewer easements may also be required. If the plan commission is satisfied with the proposed plans, there is a suggested motion that the plan commission approves the site and building plan submitted by Philip Annis, CH Oak Creek WI 1 UT LLC for a portion of the property at 7869 South 13th Street subject to conditions one through eight. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, would the applicant like to say anything before we, we start? Yep, yeah, please. Uh, name and address, please, for the record. Uh, Ryan Marks with Ryan Companies, uh, 309 North Water Street in Milwaukee. Um, I would just say it was a good uh, summary of the project. Uh, Freighter Health has been very happy with their first building across the street here to make a significant investment in this facility just down the road and provide the next step of care, which is 24-7 uh, service uh, for uh, the community. Um, as was mentioned, it's um, eight emergency room um, facility it was seven overnight beds. It has all the lab, imaging, pharmacy, everything you need at one facility. Um, and it is staffed with all board-certified physicians. Um, we're working through some of the comments uh, with staff. Right now, we understand we may need to change a few things, but I think we're close and we're willing to do what we need to do to make it compliant for our residents. Okay. Um, questions from the commission? Christina? Uh, yes, I do have a question. Uh, just because of the location of the site and the proximity of the on-ramp to the freeway, have you looked at the traffic analysis from that perspective to ensure that there is no conflict or no suddenly coming someone to our rear end or sudden stop for one reason or the other? Yeah, we've spent a lot of time uh, on traffic analysis. It's, um, as you know, a lot going on in that corner, and there's been a lot, right. of, a lot of people concerned of backups. I should mention also that we, we did have a neighborhood meeting about a month ago and invited all the neighborhood folks and had a good conversation with people. So I think we are started off on the right foot and to address some concerns. But... Um, as you know, it's a complicated corner and yes. a heavy retail site, and um, so we've we've um, modified our uh, entrance and exits to the facility uh, several times, actually, in coordination with um, the county and the state as well. So I think we're at a spot that we all feel comfortable with, um, and we'll be able to be approved. Um, we spent a lot of time on that. Oh. I still did not, I heard you spend a lot of time, but I'm saying, have you looked at the analysis to ensure there is no delays or backups? Yes, we've had a full traffic this? study that has been okay. submitted. I, I believe the city has that as well. Okay. okay. Um, one more thing. Uh, this is going to have ambulance. You said you had like meetings with neighborhood groups and residents. Okay. Have they expressed any concerns with like the ambulance noises and higher traffic volume? Have they expressed any concerns? Um, not that? much. In I should state that there's really not a lot of ambulances coming to this facility. Uh, anyone that's in an urgent situation that's in the ambulance typically is going to go to a, a major hospital in the area. 
Um, the ambulance traffic that we typically see at these facilities is if someone comes, maybe it's a stroke um, or something like that, and they determine at the hospital here that it's not the right place for them, usually they'll stabilize them there, and then ambulance will come and pick them up and take them to the acute care hospital. Um, and so in that case, they're not coming in with lights and, and sirens going. It's kind of slide up to the back door and, and let them up and out. So you really won't see much ambulance noise or traffic here. Okay. Good for me. Um, Brad? Yeah. Can you explain a little bit how the two buildings will combine and work together? Uh, sure. I, I see that you have an emergency on this building and you're going to have one over there. How does that kind of work together? Yeah, the, the big difference is this new facility is a step or two above uh, what this urgent care is here. Main differences are um, this facility currently is an open 24-7, um, so uh, they also don't have overnight stay beds. So if it's determined you come to the neighborhood hospital and it's determined you're dehydrated or something like that, you need to stay for observation can't do that in this current facility, but they can do that in this new facility where you may need to stay a day or two. Um, we'll also have things like telemed. Um, this facility provides meals, of course, if you're overnight stay. Um, you're not doing the, um, uh, there's no surgeries in this facility. There's no uh, ICU in this facility that you'd go to the next level of care, at the main hospital. Um, so it's made, to fill that gap between just your emergency room or urgent care visit that um, maybe some stitches or something like that to the next level where you might need percussion, uh, dehydration, uh, chest pains, things like that. Uh, this facility will be um, able to handle that. I think it's a good addition to Oak Creek. Re right. Appreciate it. Like that. Uh, just yeah. on top of that, so will, will things change next door here? in terms of now that you have that? Not really, no. I think um, Freighter's really excited about it because they have kind of the full toolbox to work with right here um, in conjunction with their main campus in Wauwatosa. Um, so there'll definitely be, um, I think, some push and pull on how they work their uh, programs and what's better suited at which location from time to time. But they're really excited to have all their tools at hand here in Oak Creek. Thank you. Chris, you got some? Yeah, I, Chief uh, Kresik, any issues um, from your perspective on the bells and whistles, sirens, or, or whatnot to answer? Leave any uh, concerns? Mike Kresik, Fire Department. So, you know, I guess when you start to look at the dynamics, maybe address uh, how this facility would primarily affect the fire departments through ambulance transports. Uh, you know, for reference, the clinic, the urgent care clinic, we've had 186 responses for EMS calls to that facility. Uh, and those patients go out to emergency rooms from that urgent care center. Certainly this is an emergency room. And like the, the staff had stated, patients have the greater potential to be transported out of that emergency department to another emergency department. That's a little bit of a different dynamic for the fire service when comparing a transport from an urgent care center to an ED, then you get into an ED to an ED. I, I think that's probably a little bit out of the scope of what the plan commission would be concerned about. That's something that we would work with um, the facility when that time comes. You know, certainly there's there's quite a bit of ramp up time associated with that. Um, stepping back from, I, I suppose I should address the noise complaints generally. Generally speaking, transports to emergency departments happen non-emergency. Uh, there are cases where they would be emergency transports uh, with lights and sirens, and I would feel comfortable at this point stating they probably would not go to this facility. As the facility already stated, those type of transports are generally reserved for the EDs with the capacity uh, to handle that type of acuity in a patient. So. I believe what you would see in this facility is a, a generally non-emergency transports there. Certainly, could you have an emergency transport out of there? Sure, that potential is there, but I would consider that probably a lower incidence. Jumping away 
from as as long as I'm up here and not to waste too much of your time jumping away from the ambulance portion of it uh, the one thing the fire department would like to point out about the site plan the layout is for the plan commission to really consider site access now certainly um, maneuvering your way into a, a hospital is important you know that, that's critically important this is rather unique situation here it's located in probably what could be considered a business or a mercantile uh, type area uh, our concern would be that that access road which does not filter directly into the hospital grounds but rather to the north of it is of sufficient capacity and as he stated before um, avoids congestion and backups that does allow for efficient ingress to that facility. I think you can use IKEA and the grade school probably as a good example. That's essentially a two-lane road uh, for both facilities. Now granted we don't respond there as often. You have a greater incidence certainly with the hospital. So I would hope that as the planning process goes along for the rest of that site Certainly, emphasis is given to that access road to maintain clean access for that hospital facility. Great. Any other questions for Assistant Chief Kresic? No, you pretty much answered mine. I was going to be, I was worried about the ambulance too, and we'll discuss that road problem there too. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Got something. I do have a question for the applicant. Can you provide a little more information about the peak hours where you would have the largest amount of employees present? Sure. I think the peak hours are mostly during the daytime hours. Um, there's a few more staff members that would include dietitians, um, inpatient uh, telemedicine, so you can do telemedicine with the main hospital. Um, Probably some additional uh, advanced practice providers would be there, um, and possibly um, more dietitians and pharmacists. So it's a little bit more of the softer edges, I guess, of the staff. Um, they'll always be staffed with the, the medical director, the hospitalists, uh, the ER doctors, um, and, and their assistant staff. So. As I know, in in our notes, we have a maximum. Ten people. Is that okay. yes, it's five to ten again, okay, depending on time of day and okay. uh, just patient flow. Okay. So, and then in total, approximately forty new jobs. You know, as we do shifts. Um, during this time. Thank you. Just a clarification for you. Um, this is obviously just one small piece of a much bigger puzzle here. Um, that's the reason the engineering is asking for the stormwater pond easement. Uh, on this site itself, it's unique because there's no direct access to a road. There's no room for a stormwater pond on this site. And I don't think we have ever had a site where we've approved that standalone. So the access easement's important here. The stormwater easement's important. And that's all being worked into the larger property. Um, it's just kind of got this little piece in the corner out here first. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think you summed it up correctly. You know, I mean, even the road, uh, it could be access road. Mayor, your yes. comments are not getting picked oh. up by the mic. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're right regarding the stormwater. And again, with the access road, the access road, depending on what comes to the west of it, everything's going to have to be beefed up. Assistant Chief Crescent. Right, that the road's not going to service it, and also, Brian. I mean, just in your conversations, are they only going to have one access point in here, or will there be another one farther north, possibly, into this site? In the future, it's planned for their, a north access. Um, that's whenever that larger piece gets developed. At this point, it's just that one access to serve this one entity here. Okay. Okay. Uh, Don, anything? No, my concern was with, of course, the rose as well. Um, you know, we put in some whatever it's going to be, uh, restaurants or whatever, and then that road gets you know, full of traffic, and we need to get an ambulance in there. It seems like there's that's a long way to get to the hospital. Uh, 
a, a couple comments to those two comments. One, um, as the developer and owner of the property, those are really important points to us as well. So we've been working very closely with the master developer, Summerstone, for this whole uh, parcel. Uh, we've also hired the same uh, civil engineering team, R.A. Smith, so they can really keep their hat about um, how this all operates and works together uh, in the end. Um, as far as the access goes, uh, we've done a, a number of these facilities, that, and this is not unusual for this type of facility to be placed in a larger retail development, a little bit off the main artery. Um, we haven't had an issue. The reason we like this location is because it's very visible. So as the community is driving by, um, they know where it is. And so when they do have an urgent um, issue, they know exactly where to go. Um, so we're not as concerned about um, getting through the last 500 feet. Um, it's more important for us to know how do they get you know, there the first three miles. Um, so it's it does act like a retail type property. Yeah. Anybody else questions? Well, I'm going to focus a little more on the building itself, and I'm going to start with the trash enclosure. Um, if I'm reading this right, is the trash enclosure on the far northeast corner, is that going to be out in the front of the building? Yeah, it's unique. You know, the really the entrance in the front of the building is on the far south piece see the canopy and kind of drive in, which would be the drop-off area. Obviously, this parcel is unique in that there's no back door. You know, everything's kind of in view. That trash enclosure was put there originally because it provides good access uh, for the employees to carry out uh, the waste, but also for um, the garbage to be picked up with the truck coming in and pulling in and be able to dump the dumpsters. Um, we're more than happy to try to find a better solution to it, um, you know, I think we do want it on the north side, uh, to get away from Drexel, um, and away from the front door of the facility, and more of the kind of back of house. I think we have really good um, materials to enclose it, and also landscaping to kind of tuck it away. Think so? <laughs> I think so. You may not think so. Uh, that's a lot of money in for a trash enclosure in that. Um, well, the generator it, enclosure looks like it's all masonry, but the trash, well, I guess it is masonry outside. You're right. Okay. I apologize for that one. <laughs> How did you go in there? Yeah. yeah well, the I know. I mean, it's, it's you know, I'm worried about it because this is the first thing going on this, this portion. And uh, it's, it's really got to set the tone for what it's going to be. It's got to be a really good looking sitting on this corner um so i mean you know the masonry standards got to be up there the glazing's got to be there it's got to fit kind of right um i get it the way you situated it uh, just just want to make sure that it gets up to our standards because we got one shot at that corner and uh, it's a prominent corner uh given what drexel's drexel has become so i just want to make sure it's right and you know, I, I kind of I looked at it too, Pat. And I thought maybe you put it to the, the west side, but I, you know, I don't know typically depends how they goes. lay out. You know, if their kitchens are there, what you know, where they typically it depends are. what goes next to the west as well. I, I mean, I'm happy that the entrance is facing Drexel. Whereas I thought it might come in the other way, which a lot of times you see it. So I think that's our benefit. Um, it, as you enter into this. The, the big property, Mayor, I think at some point we're going to be past that dumpster and the west will become more prominent in that corner than everybody's going to. So I think it's, in my opinion, it might be the, the least or the the most desirable um, of limited and, options. And you may be right because, you know, I just got first glance and um, obviously we don't want it to the southern end. Masonry's there and all the, the, yeah. bar, the barriers are there. Yeah, I didn't see it depicted there, but I'm looking at the probably looking at it from the other view here. I think that almost seems like a building situation to be out here. Think so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're not depicting the if I'm when I'm looking at this picture, am I standing on 13th? Standing on the corner. On the when corner. I'm thinking on the corner of 13th and 
Drexel. This is I'm the perspective the looking okay. from the southeast to the northwest. Okay. Because when I looked at oh. the other plan, if if you're standing on the corner of Thirteenth, I was Drexel, judging it off the canopy, off the, the ground. So there's two canopies. There's right. one on I, the I, south I, and one on the north. Yeah, I was depicting the wrong canopy. So okay, better than I hoped for. Um, blazing. I realize it's a hospital. We don't want people looking in there. Uh, Carrie, is the is the glazing adequate? I know we don't have the high glazing standards we have in Town Square, but so the requirements include glass, but the standards are for decorative masonry, glass. So basically, those two materials. So CMU, brick, glass, those are all things that we have as approvable materials in the code. Metal panels, we've approved for um, several buildings in the past. So that requires a three-quarter majority approval of the plan commission, as has been the case for every other use. The EFIS portion is a bit more uh, problematic because they can only have 25%. It's only allowed as an accent. I don't have materials calculations for each elevation, so I can't tell you how much of each material is being proposed here. And I know your question is specifically about the glazing. The glass for most of the building, I think, is clear, or tinted, rather. So it'll read as glass. That curtain wall will also read as glass. I have no idea how many of the proposed panels on that block are going to be spandrel versus regular glass. Now, it looks like the top portion is going to be spandrel, but that's something that we need clarification on. So in my mind, the plan commission needs to approve three, a couple of things and then get clarification on a couple of things. Uh, clarification on the materials percentages per elevation. Clarification on where exactly that spandrel glass is going to be located. Clarification on that ceramic wall. If there's going to be a ceramic wall, we need to have it labeled. Otherwise, I don't actually see it on any of the elevations. Um, also, EFIS needs to comprise no more than 25% of the building uh, per elevation. That can only be an accent material. And then the metal panels are something that the plan commission has to consider. And obviously, the signage will come later. Uh, la landscaping. Um, you know, I know that corner got pretty ripped up. Is anything being salvaged off? that corner because I know there were concerns and I'd, I have to bring it up um, about the mature trees there. Are any, of, any idea? Or is it all kind of being reworked? To the best of your knowledge, I know it's, it's probably an unfair question for you. Or who are you directing your question to? Any you. <laughs> I can't speak to what's been done on the parcel right now. Okay. I can't speak to how many trees have been removed as part of that 13th Street up upgrade. I don't know. Um, as far as the plans for retaining as many of the trees that are further in on this particular parcel, I'd have to defer to the applicant. I don't know how dense it is back there. Oh. Right. I would say for the most part, those trees are going to be gone. They're going to be gone. Yeah, all of them. Okay. And I, I, I know that's a huge issue for the city forester. Yes, um, and I had to bring it really, up on her behalf. Yeah, there's so. some really nice white oaks that are in there that she is really disappointed are going to be cut down. So. Yeah, I know. I know. It's it's hard. It's very hard. Um, parking's adequate. Uh, Mike, I hate to drag you back up here. You can do it with a nod, but uh, getting around the building, not 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 with an ambulance, but in case of an emergency and you got to get in there with an engine. Uh, yes, Mayor. You know, our initial look at the plans that certainly provided us 360 access around the building, and it complies with the NFPA standard for access roads. So we're okay with that. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, I think I'm out of questions, guys. 
That's it for me. Anything else? I just want to see if the applicant can address Terry's comments about the, he had several different things, the ceramic wall. Pleasing. Yeah. Um, I'll do the best I can. And Susan, you might have to help me out here. Uh, the ceramic wall is gone. That, that's not a part of our plan anymore. So we can certainly um, submit some new plans that have that removed. Um, the other pieces, oh, we're, we just got our initial calculations back on materials from our architect. Um, I didn't see them yet per uh, elevation, but I do believe the EFIS overall was 12%. Probably be pretty close to the 25% limit per elevation. Um, I'm not sure on the glaze. I'd think the, the the most of it's coming on that curtain wall on that, that entrance portion. But hi, hi, I'm Denise Valenta. Um, the glazing itself. To your point, the only part that's the spandrel spandrel glazing is at the very top of the large. Uh, entry lobby area and that's for solar shading inside the building so it's just that top panel that's spandrel glass the rest of all the glazing will be clear Gary can you show us what that looks like well you say the top what is the top of it or what area The top row of that glass curtain wall. See it? Yeah. Okay. Very based on. Andrew has to be approved by the Planning Commission. Okay. So you get the calculations at the twelve percent. We need but to get the materials data. calculations. Yeah. yeah. The actual data. We'll okay. submit those calculations and if we need to bring it down to meet it, we're happy to do that. So I, I guess that brings the question we want to hold that to the twenty five percent per elevation? Yes. And then we need to have that as a condition. Of the approval? Yeah, do we need some? Yes, me code. Um, yes, me code. If you want to make a specific condition of approval, you can, but it is requirement and code. Code covers it, right? Um, we need a condition for approval from the county on the, ro on the access? Uh, there is a Where condition is in here that copies of all access approvals and agreements shall okay. be provided to the city. Thank you. Yep. I actually have one more question mm -hmm. to the applicant. And that's just out of curiosity. Are you going to have some sort of a maintenance going on to kind of maintain the glass to make sure like over time is being cleaned and maintained, especially we are at that important corner as the mayor directed that it's going to be maintained over time, not just the first or second year? Yeah, no, no question. Um, healthcare in general and freighter on top of that have a very high standard for how their facilities look. Um, it's really, you know, projects an image to the community. So it's a uh, concern for them. So it's like just not the building but also the landscape and ensure that everything is going to be well taken care of. Okay. Yep. Good. Thank and you. And Commissioner Johnston to your question. Condition number five states that the plans must be revised to meet code requirements for exterior building materials. Yeah, it looks like you got most of it all covered then. No, not most of it. You got it all covered. You never yeah. made it. I guess the, the two <laughs> things we'd be looking for is the <laughs> approval on the metal panel. Uh, you know, that's an important piece mm -hmm. to the brand and the kind of their standard and marketing um, it's not I, I don't know do we know the percentage Denise? it's not much it's more of an accent material than it is a what I would call a primary building material um, and then of course the spandrel glass is, would be the other piece that we're hope for approval on on the metal panels we've dealt with on other buildings so it's really kind of more of a commonplace yeah, we're not unfamiliar with architectural metal right. panels as an exterior building material. Exactly, and and the spandrel glass again, it's it's really just uh, a darkening 
So it's you a small it, portion of the yeah, overall it's glazing. opaque. I, I really don't have any issues with that. Yep. So, um, any other questions before I, before I ask for a motion? Right, seeing none. Uh, motion. Clark moves that the plan commission approve the site and building plans submitted by Philip Connes. TH Oak Creek, Wisconsin, 1 UT LLC for a portion of the property at 7869 South 13th Street with the following conditions. Number one, that all relevant code requirements are in effect. Number two, that the CSMs approved by the Common Council on December 19th, 2017, July 17th, 2018, and October 16th. 2018 are recorded prior to the submission of building permit applications. Three, that copies of all access approvals and agreements shall be provided to the city prior to the submission of building permit applications. Number four, that the exterior brick veneer meets the minimum four inch thick requirement per code. Number five, that the plans are revised to meet code requirements for exterior building materials. Number six, that all mechanical equipment, transformers, and utility boxes, ground, building, and rooftop are screened from view. Number seven, that all required easements are included on the plans prior to the submission of building permit applications. And number eight, that all revised plans, site, building, landscaping, etc., are submitted in digital format for review and approval by the Department of Community Development prior to the submission of building permit applications. Seaford seconds. Roll call. Anna, aye. Dunstan, aye. Brother, aye. Laura, aye. Kavich, aye. Kuzikowski, aye. Grell, aye. Seaford, aye. Chandler, aye. Great. I want to thank you guys for coming out tonight and being so well prepared and answering all our questions. Thank huh. you. Thank you. We're excited. Okay. Uh, item 5C, uh, consideration of a survey cer certified survey map. Uh, for the properties at 7266 and 7328 South Howell Avenue. And as soon as Carrie is ready, she's got to switch some graphics here, uh, she will give you the narrative. The proposal is to combine those two lots on Howell Avenue. The Plan Commission will recall that these were the two lots that were proposed for a, con a comprehensive plan amendment not too long ago. Um, there were some concerns that were raised during that review by the Plan Commission that that area should not be restricted to just the two properties and should, in fact, extend further north for the Comprehensive Plan Amendment. However, the applicant chose to proceed with their request to the Common Council, and the Common Council did approve of that change. Now, that doesn't mean that a future modification to those parcels to the north is not forthcoming. Staff is going to be looking at that. Um, it's just that did not occur simultaneously with their request. So. The comprehensive plan amendment did go through. It was changed from plan industrial to mixed residential. Uh, that was approved on uh, October 16th. So the proposal again is to combine those two properties via CSM into one lot of conforming size. This is in advance of pursuing a future multifamily residential development. Um, additional reviews would be required prior to any development, in fact, a request for a rezone and conditional use permit has been submitted and that will be before the Plan Commission for review on November 13th. It will also require a DOT review and approval of any future access to that uh, parcel based on the site plan. It does meet the minimum requirements for the existing RS3 district and RM1 district. Again, the rezoning is scheduled for the next Plan Commission meeting. However, the proposed parcel is not exactly large enough to meet the proposed unit count, the density that they are proposing. Um, it's not before the Plan Commission because it doesn't actually affect the CSM directly. However, for your um, information, they are proposing 50 two-bedroom and 16 three-bedroom units. So there might need to be a little bit of a change to that proposed site plan, the unit uh, count, prior to or concurrent with the conditional use request. So that's something that the Plan Commission should consider at the next meeting, but it's just an FYI so that you're aware that that's forthcoming. If the Plan Commission is satisfied with the proposed certified survey map, there is a suggested motion that the Plan Commission recommends to the Common Council that the certified survey map submitted by Hume on MVAH Partners for the properties at 7266 
and 7328 South Howell Avenue be approved with the condition that all technical corrections, including but not limited to spelling errors, minor coordinate geometry corrections, and corrections required for compliance with the Municipal Code and Wisconsin statutes are made prior to recording. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, we'll open it up right to the commission for comments, questions. Anybody to the right? Pat? Uh, you weren't here for this. No, I was here for the first two weeks ago. We before I went to council two meetings ago. Hey, you did. Yeah. You were. Oh, yeah, um, you were. Five here. four vote or something. Yeah. Like that. It ended up right. Yeah. So if just to bring planning up up to speed, so that it was denied here at a five four vote to, to change the comprehensive plan, went to council and it passed on a six zero vote up at council. Um, so five one. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Five. Uh, it was a five one vote there. Uh, to approve, and, and really what they were looking at was the immediate property. Uh, they did direct staff to, to take a look at that northern triangle uh, and get, you know, see if it's appropriate to change comprehensive plan to match that later on. Now, just because they change comprehensive plan does not mean it cannot remain residential dwellings there. So, um, that's, that's how we arrived where we are now. I guess my question is to some of Carrie's directions. Um, well, I don't think it affects tonight, but if we approve the combination, my concern is the density going forward when we get to the next step. So, density would be handled at the next step. But so what? the the CSM actually has nothing to do with density. It's not based on a proposed site plan, but because this has some uh, some specific um, application presentation materials that are becoming that are going to be coming before you fairly quickly and were presented as part of the comprehensive plan amendment. It's one of those things that you want to be uh, aware of just for the next step. Um, does it make sense to potentially look at acquiring the, the other properties in the surrounding area to make sure that they have adequate space? That's an option. It's not something that we can require but it might be something that they want to consider if they're looking for that specific density. Again, it's an FYI for the plan commission that doesn't really have anything to do with the map itself. They can still combine the parcels and then amend their proposal for the next step of review. Okay, thanks for the explanation. I guess it's uh, for the record the density doesn't fly for the next step, but it doesn't really matter now. Oh. Brett, anything? Nothing? Chelsea? question was asked okay Chris All right, Greg Don yep. Brian Christina Brian's Brian. got something Ooh, do we need layout. to have a note on here for the buildings to be raised or does it matter we can add that it's a technical correction and I just bring it up because the barn actually sits out into the right of way good catch good catch We have Actually, seen that note added to CSMs in the past, so we'll just require that as part of a technical correction. Actually, three three units to come down, correct? All buildings, as far as I'm aware, will be coming down if the if, if the proposal is approved. Okay. Uh, no further questions. Uh, motion, please. Carl moves the commission recommends to the Common Council that the certified survey map submitted by Hum on MVAH partners for the properties at 7266 and 7328 South Hall Ave be approved with the condition that all technical corrections, including but not limited to spelling errors, minor coordinate, coordinate ge geometry corrections, and corrections required for compliance with the municipal code and Wisconsin statutes are made prior to recording. Chandler, second. Roll call. Hannah, aye. Dunstan, aye. Hello, aye. Laura Kai. David Chai. Krzykowski, aye. Roll aye. Skipper, aye. Chandler, aye. Okay. Uh, before we adjourn, just a reminder, this is Halloween weekend coming up. There will be trick-or-treaters out in the neighborhood. Please keep your porch lights on for them if you are participating and be generous. And above all, uh, watch out for them on the streets and roads. We want a safe and happy Halloween. Um, and we had the Fall Fest this weekend. Weather wasn't quite with us, but it was a good time for all. So I want to thank all the vendors and all the staff that took part in that.
And as always, thanks to our staff, IT, Tim back there, and Carrie, very well prepared tonight. Thank you. So uh, adjournment, please. Carla moves to adjourn at 6.51. Paper seconds. Roll call. And I. Johnston, I. Carla, I. Laura, I. Kavich, I. Kuzikowski, I. Carla, I. Stupid, I. Chandler, I. 